I've always been a big fan of interior language. Like when you get a job and you start to learn the ins and outs and little code words or abbreviations and things like that. I love learning those personal inside languages. Like if you go to a restaurant in the middle of the Midwest and you hear some awesome slang term for sunny side up eggs, um, but it's something really funny like slap it on a bagel and uh, I don't even know. This is how, how much I don't know about it, but I love interior language like this. I always wanted that in my own career or my own life. And then when I got into film, I realized there is a huge interior language. So today I'm going to be telling you some of those interior language, uh, the words uh, and ideas and where they come from and just some fun stuff for you to know about the film world. The very first thing we're going to talk about is the almighty C-47. Now it's a very expensive piece of equipment that is found on film sets the world over. Every film set will always have these and they're clothespins. Sorry. Back in the early days of film to get more money for the film, producers had to finagle different words in the breakdown of how much money they needed and they needed clothespins. Clothespins are just the thing that you absolutely need on a film set to hang this in front of a light so it's nice and pretty to clip cables, everything else. And of course, you know, they're a dime a dozen, but uh, to allocate more money for things they actually need that the executive producers would not allow them to get for the film, they started calling clothespins C-47s because it sounds more technical and more sophisticated and fancy and they would allocate that money to different areas where they actually needed it. So the C-47 is a clothespin. Uh, fun side note, you can always tell when a film is on break because there's uh, grips and gaffers and everyone walking around and their shirt is just filled with C-47s. An apple box. Apple boxes are things that you think are a little bit silly until you are on a set and you absolutely need them everywhere you go. Apple boxes are literally a wooden box, very solid, very strongly built, and they come in four different sizes. A full, a half, a quarter, and a pancake. And they're just little razors that you can put underneath gear or you can stand on them. Tom Cruise, I know you got your own brand out there somewhere. Let's talk about some shots, some shot elements. Uh, a martini shot is considered the very last shot of a film because it harks back to the early days of Hollywood where they would say, uh, the next shot is going to be in a glass. So this is the martini shot and everyone gets excited because they shoot the last one and then the film is done. The Abbey Singer shot is the second to last shot of the day and this is named after the famous assistant director Abbey Singer and this is the to kind of warn everyone on set that we're going to start wrapping up, we're going to start finishing everything. Uh, shout out Abbey Singer so people can start breaking some stuff down in the background. We get that shot and then it's on to the martini. The Jonesy is a first shot of a production and was named after Sarah Jones, an assistant camera or AC. Unfortunately, she was killed on the set of Midnight Rider. And ever since then, the term Jonesy is not only an homage to her and to film people in general who have lost their lives, but it's also kind of an overarching uh, safety awareness. Like we're doing the Jonesy as everyone said, has everyone taken all the safety precautions necessary to start working? Uh, the Marsha, Marsha, Marsha shot is named after the Brady Bunch skit and it is the third to last shot. I don't know why. I've never heard a good enough story to justify this being called the Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. A day player, you might have heard this. Uh, day player are crew or cast who come on only for a handful of days instead of a full show run. Dead cat. Dead cat is one of my favorite terms to throw around because it's one of those terms that if you're not in the know, it just sounds weird, but it's a first sleeve that goes over a boom mic to cut down on wind and other sounds and pops and everything else, but it makes the sound sound much cleaner. And it just, it's super furry and it looks like a dead animal. Tripods on a set are called sticks. Real original there. You also don't have extension cables on a film set. They're called stingers. I was actually on a film set where someone called it an extension cable and the guy got reamed out for not knowing the terminology. It was sad and kind of funny at the same time. C stands are great. They're all over the set. They're three legged stands that can hold lights, boom mics, hold everything. And on a film set, they're often called Gary Coleman's. 
sides are just the pages of the script they are shooting that day, so they don't have to lug around the entire script for the whole dime, and just it's a waste of money to keep printing those out. So sides are just the pages necessary for that shoot. MOS. There's a lot of controversy where this term comes from, uh, but it actually comes from motor only shot, meaning there's no audio, there's no sound recording, it's just the camera going. Now, there is another kind of backstory slash this sounds neat kind of history to film that a famous German cinematographer like Fritz Lang would constantly shout, we will do it without sound! And the MOS kind of took over that as meet out sound without sound. A baby is a small light, usually about 750 watts to 1,000 watts, and uh, there'll be a Fresnel lens in front of it. A Blondie is a 2,000 watt light uh, without the Fresnel in front. Alan Smithy. Now, you probably thought Steven Spielberg makes a lot of movies, or if you're a film nut, you might know that Takeshi Miike makes a lot of movies. The guy makes like four films a year. How is he not more known? But Alan Smithy, I'm willing to bet without doing the research that he holds the world record for the most movies. Now, Alan Smithy isn't a real person. It's a pseudonym. It's a fake name that when a director does not want their real name on a project, they'll use the name Alan Smithy to distance themselves from that project. Usually they're just trying to get a check, but they don't believe in the work or they half-ass something, so they just use the name Alan Smithy, and boom, you have a ton of movies that probably aren't very good. Clapper. Now, I guarantee you've seen a clapper. 79 fucking explosives. Okay? Yeah, it's that thing. They're designed to tell you what scene, what shot, and what take each shot is. It also can sync up sound by hitting that clap right at the right time, you can sync that up with the sound, so when you shoot on film, there is no sound on film. So you have to sync up the audio and the film in post-production. Change pages. Change pages are colored pages that the cast and crew will get added to the script. The script is constantly evolving, constantly being rewritten. So when they add a new page or a change or an alteration, they change the color of it. So by the end of a film, typically a script looks like a rainbow. Craft services, and this might be my favorite part. Craft services are the food people who give you food. It's amazing, because when on a film set, you're busting your ass all day. A little bit of food goes a long way. A gate. Uh, if you've ever watched behind the scenes stuff, you'll always hear someone shouting, check the gate. Checking the gate. Got it. Checking the gate. Checking, Checking the gate. And the gate is the area between the lens and the camera body and you always have to go through and pump some air in there and make sure there's no hair or lint or dust because that could ruin a shot. Foley. Foley is really cool. Uh, and if it's done right, you'll never know. Foley is making the sounds after the film is shot and putting it into the film to make it sound like you're actually there. Like, how many times have you sat around a fire listening to the fire? It sounds nothing like a fire on a movie. Because most of the time, fire is made by taking like a Snickers wrapper and wrinkling it together in front of a microphone. That's how you get sound. Also, side note, Foley was named after Jack Foley. Uh, honey wagons, um, also known as porta johns or porta potties. Not all glamorous, guys. Call sheets are super important. They are the schedule of who is arriving when and who needs to be there on the set that day. Overcranking. Overcranking is something that was done at a very early time in film history where you couldn't just hit record, you had to actually crank the film to get it to record onto the film. And if you went really fast, it was called overcranking, which means you could slow it down in post. Undercranking, allows for that really super fast jittery look a lot of those old 20s movies had. Pickups. Pickups are minor shots typically done after the filming is completely done, after the martini has been popped. You gotta go back and do some kind of a shot to fill in the gap for editing. Squibs. Squibs are really cool. I wish I worked with squibs more often. Um, squibs are small explosive devices that can make it look like explosions or gunshots, things like that. But they actually put a vest on you with squibs on the outside so they can burst through the fabric and sometimes they have little blood packs and stuff. One of my favorite terms of uh, film interior language is rhubarbs. Rhubarbs are 
the extras in the background who are mouthing their words, but you don't really hear what they're saying. And this comes from the fact that if you just say rhubarb, 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 it actually looks like you're having a conversation with someone. There's also a term called walla, and it's done the same way. So you go rhubarb, walla, rhubarb, walla. And another thing in the industry is saying peas and carrots. So if you just say peas and carrots over and over with a mass of other people, it actually sounds like people are having conversations. Well, that's a bunch of the film terminology that I know. What film terminology do you know that I did not include? Or what are some of your favorite interior languages from your own line of work? I would love to hear them. Put them in the comments. I'm dying to hear. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great day. Make sure you do something amazing today. Do something for you. Do something for someone else. Be better. Take care. I'll see you soon.